Hello and welcome to this video tutorial series on Atlassian Jira. Specifically we're going to be focusing on how to administer and configure uh, Jira and uh, in this series of six videos I'll be discussing firstly what is Jira and why should you use it, how to set up your free Jira on-demand trial uh, by the Atlassian website, secondly I'll be discussing um, in the second video how to set up the basic JIRA environment, so the top level settings and also things like how to set up your color schemes and logos and that sort of thing. Okay. In the third video we'll start to look into how, to, how do you set up a project. This is where it starts to get interesting, um, but in this case we'll just create a very basic project using all the defaults and then I'll talk you through what the defaults mean and uh, what you get. Next up is uh, how do you set up fields and screens. So uh, the ability to bespoke these gives you a lot of power in, in determining what data you need to capture from users for a specific issue. So if there's, for example, a, a bug, which you, it might be a common use case, you would want to be able to say, well, actually, I need to know, for example, what, what version they're using or what environment they're using, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, the next video will discuss how do you create users, how do you create groups that users belong to, uh, how do you set up email notification schemes. So specifically, um, if you're, let's say, uh, wanting to notify people when an issue is created so that they know that there's some work to do, you can define it there. Um, similar to that is also permissions. So each project has a permission scheme. Uh, and this can determine who can create issues, who can update issues, who can add comments, who can add attachments and, and various other factors. It's uh, really quite powerful and very useful. Finally, um, we'll be discussing how do you set up a custom workflow. Okay, A workflow becomes relevant once the ticket has been created. Basically it determines what options are available to what users. So for example as the reporter I might be able to close an issue um, as a, another user, I might be able to say I'm working on an issue or I've picked up an issue and so on and so forth. Yep, very simple um, but also quite creative and fun, so um, stick around. <laughs> Next up, um, a little bit about me. So I used to work for a major e-commerce retailer. Uh, I won't tell you which one, but they're quite big. Um, and I helped them set up their Jira system. So from uh, no users and no tickets, uh, what, what we ended up with was a system where there were hundreds of users across many teams and thousands of systems, uh, thousands of tickets rather. Um, so yeah, hopefully I should be able to share some insights uh, as we go along. Okay, right, what is JIRA? To put it simply, JIRA is a web-based issue tracking tool. Web-based is important because it means that anybody from anywhere in the world can log in and see the issues that are currently raised or create their own ones. Okay, uh, this means that uh, if you've got a team in, I don't know, Tajikistan and uh, Peru and Cambodia, they can all collaborate and work uh, towards uh, similar goals. Okay. Next up, uh, tickets are raised inside projects by those with the create issue permission, of course, and then they're associated with a specific issue type, such as bug or uh, an issue or an enhancement or a query. Okay. Next up, once a ticket has been created, they can be worked on by users with permissions and reassigned, resolved and closed, yep. or, or reopened or any other transition that you've defined in the workflow. Yep. Okay. Uh, next up, the search feature in JIRA. Uh, this is a really great and really powerful uh, tool. Um, essentially every uh, every uh, field or virtually every field can be queried so you can look at things like when it was updated, who it was raised by, who, uh, who the current assignee is and so on and so forth. Um, so I find that really useful um, and uh, well worth uh, well worth your time. Uh, once you've created a search result you can save that as a filter and then you can put the filter results onto a dashboard. So in this example, you have something. Uh, a this is a, a bespoke gadget, but uh, for the, for the purposes of this of this video, um, if you look at the assigned to me uh, gadget, you could es essentially do that for a filter. So you would say issues 
that are currently assigned to me and let's say unresolved okay that way you guarantee that you're getting all the relevant data to yourself or to your users uh, in the best possible way okay next up why use Jira and who uses Jira well um, the main use of course is software development once the scope of work has been defined the work pieces are raised as tickets by project managers so essentially a project manager goes ahead and says I need this this and this done and they might be parent tickets underneath which subtasks could exist okay next up um, developers pick up the tickets they then set to work on them and then when they're done they pass them off to testing and that stage a tester would come along uh, te check them out do their tests and then say okay I'm happy with that that's accepted and that ticket can be closed or deployed or whatever your next status is or they can say actually it needs to go back to the developers for further work and then if all is well the ticket can be closed by the issue reporter so in Jira uh, there is very much an individual uh, base system so an individual reports an issue and an individual picks up the issue and resolves it okay cool next up we have uh, well I should also add that at all times a project manager and anybody else can see exactly the status of an issue and exactly the status of a project using the dashboard using Greenhopper uh, using um, any any of the other gadgets uh, which which will give you uh, so essentially you can have uh, like pie charts and various other um, interactive uh, visual uh, aids to help uh, PM see exactly where they stand. Okay, uh, like I said, Greenhopper allows issues, uh, so it's very good for project managers because it allows issues to be based off filters all on a rapid board. Rapid board um, essentially is a series of columns which rep which are your steps from open in progress, resolved and closed. Um, and uh, the uh, then you have the ability to drag and drop issues between those um, using Greenhopper. So I'd strongly suggest for project managers, uh, it's a great tool for regular users, though not essential. So we won't be covering this in this particular tutorial series, but it is worth looking into. Okay. Um, other uses, mm, bit ancillary, but we'll, we'll cover them anyway. A customer services or help desk tool. So agents can raise tickets, which are then dealt with by a relevant resolving team. So a customer phones up, I have a problem. Uh, the agent can't deal with it then and there, so they raise a ticket, and then someone will come along from the team who can resolve it and close it down. Okay. Next up, um, there are other uses such as as a CRM tool. So that's a client relationship management tool. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I generally wouldn't advocate that. I also wouldn't advocate it as a knowledge repository either, because I think in that case, Confluence, which is another tool uh, that Atlassian produce, uh, which is essentially a shared wiki similar to Wikipedia, is preferable. Um, but you can you can adapt the tool. But I would always suggest if you're trying to use it for very extreme cases, check that there's not a better tool available. Okay. Um, Jira can be extended in many different ways. There's application links, which can be so. For example, it can connect to Confluence or something or a similar web web program, uh, and uh, either import data or, or have data imported into the other system. Uh, Jelly scripts uh, can be used to automate uh, repetitive tasks, and also plugins can greatly extend the functionality of of the tool. Okay. Right, so uh, this is the, the end of the PowerPoint, if you like. Some of you will be saying, thank goodness. <laughs> um, what we're going to do now is have a look at uh, the actual online resources you can get, and we'll get on to um, how to actually set up your free trial. Okay, Okay. so next up, what we want to uh, cover is uh, the resources available to you for, uh, from Atlassian. Uh, Alassian produce a lot of help. Um, this is a uh, example, the a Confluence website with the Alassian documentation. The Jira Administrator's Guide uh, is an invaluable resource. Okay, I've used it many times, and it's really well written. And I'd strongly advise if you ever get stuck, taking a look at it. Okay. Uh, another source of help is the Answers website. I haven't used this personally, but as you can see, people go through, write out questions that they have and then the community is quite active and gets back to them with uh, with answers. Obviously 
also uh, there's Google um, so if you ever get uh, error messages I'd strongly advise chucking them into Google and seeing what uh, results you get okay um, there's also the uh, Alassian support website so I'm not currently logged in here but essentially what you can do uh, if you're within the support period if you bought Jira you, you're entitled to um, raise any issues with Atlassian through their Jira system and they'll reply to you and help you get get your problem solved okay so let's get on to the big guns getting started with uh, your free trial so what, what you want to do navigate to Atlassian.com click on try okay once you click on try click on try now okay under Jira once you've done that click on start my free trial uh, for on demand we'll use on demand because it's easier okay that way you don't have to set up your own server so you so perfect for learning okay once you've done that you will be presented with this screen okay uh, for the sake of, of the tutorial 10 users should be sufficient and then click on next okay next up uh, you'll be asked to fill in this complicated uh, form but persevere with it okay and once you've done it you'll you oh, I should say you'll also be asked to create an example address so um, I literally did use example.atlassian.net okay um, so fill out all of the fields and uh, click on start trial it will take about 10 minutes and then you should be able to um, access uh, the uh, instance you've created uh, put in your username and password and click on login and you're done okay uh, any problems uh, you can use the unable to access your account link to um, to recover your username or password okay and that's all there is to it thank you very much for watching see you in the next video